everyone, in this video we're going to see how we can find the longest sequence of repeating characters in a string. If there are multiple, we are allowed to print any of them. As an example, we have the string a b b a b a a a a b b b a. We can clearly see that the longest sequence of repeating characters in the string is a a a a because there are four a's in a row. There are other sequences of repeating characters like bb in the beginning and bbb at the end, but these aren't as long as the one that we picked to be the longest. So how do we find this? Well, we could say that we want to iterate through all possible sequence lengths, and for each possible sequence length, we test to see which are valid sequences of repeating characters. And from here, we find the largest sequence of repeating characters. The issue with this, however, is that we iterate both through sequence lengths and through every substring in the string, and this can take a lot of time. Instead, we'll take a linear approach to solving this so that once we visit a character, we won't visit it again. The main idea for this algorithm is that we're going to use a sliding window. We need to have lower and upper bound variables, and we iterate the upper bound from the start to the end. As we iterate, we're comparing every pair of consecutive characters. If the characters are the same, then we keep going. If they are different, then we take the entire substring from where we left off our lower bound to where our upper bound currently is, and then we update the lower bound to the start of the next possible substring. So let's try this example here. I'll just write out all the characters and space them out a little bit. So A, B, B, A, and then we have B, and then four A's, and then three B's, and finally one A. So we start with our lower bound at zero, and we iterate our upper bound through every pair of contiguous characters. In the first iteration, we compare A and B. Since they are not equal, we say that our current largest sequence of repeating characters is A. And we update our lower boundary to start at the index where we just stopped, so that'll be right here. Next, we compare B to B. Since they are the same, we keep our lower boundary where it is, and we keep moving. So now we compare B to A. They're different. So now we say that our current largest sequence of repeating characters is running from index 1 up to but not including index 3. And we will update our lower boundary to start checking for a new substring. So our current final substring is BB. So we keep going all the way to the end. So we see that these two are not part of the same substring, and then we keep going. And we see that these four are, so A, 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 all of these here. And so this eventually updates to A, 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 A. And then we see that B, B, B are all connected. And then we finally end with A. And so we see that A, 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 A is going to be the longest substring at the end of our iteration. And note that we only went through one time. We didn't have to check any character more than once. Essentially, the idea is that we create a sliding window to check substrings, and whenever our substring no longer consists of repeating characters, we compare the substring before it was just modified to the one that we've stored as our final answer, and we check if its length is greater. Now, before we move on to code, we can point out that our algorithm can be made quicker if we acknowledge the fact that once we see a substring of a certain length, we don't care about seeing future substrings of lesser lengths. So once we see this BB right here, we're only going to look for substrings that have length two or more. We don't care about the substrings of length one. Likewise, once we see AAAA, we're only going to look for future substrings of length four and above. We could even say we're only looking for future substrings of length five and above, because we already have a largest one of length four. So we wouldn't consider any substrings that have less than four, less than or equal to four characters, like BBB. Now, coding this is going to be left as an exercise to you guys. For now, we'll just take the simpler approach. Let's go ahead and code this out. So right here, we have our code template. We have our function definition header. So we're just gonna call it longest substring repeating cars, and we'll take a string as input. And then if you look on line six, I'm just using an alias called func to refer to longest substring repeating cars so that when we go to test out our code, we don't have to write out the entire function name each time. And we can just write func. 
So to start, we need to declare some lower and upper bounds. So here we're actually going to use two sets of lower and upper bounds. We'll call them low, up, fin low, and fin up. And we'll set them equal to 0, 1, 0, and 1. So what do each of these variables mean? Well, low and up are our temporary boundary variables. So they represent the boundaries for our sliding window. Whenever we move our sliding window across the string, up is going to be updated each time. And then whenever we have to start looking for a new substring, we will also update low. Now, what do fin low and fin up mean? Well, fin low and fin up are going to represent the lower and upper bounds for the final string that we decide to be our longest substring of repeating characters. And we're going to update these each time we have to find a new substring because we want to see if the current substring that we see is of greater length than the substring that we had originally seen previously. So we're just starting our lower and upper bounds at 0 and 1, because lower bound will be inclusive and upper bound will be exclusive. Now the next thing to do is actually to iterate through the string. So we're going to iterate up from 1 all the way to the end of the string. So while up is less than the length of string, and now we're going to compare the current character at the index up to the character at the index before up. So that's actually why we're starting at 1, because we want to be able to compare every pair of consecutive characters. And the only way to do that is to be able to start at a value that's greater than the starting value. So then we don't accidentally refer to an invalid character by referring to index negative 1. So we can say if string bracket up is not equal to string bracket up minus one. If it is, then we'll take care of that. But we mainly want to focus on if it's not. And if it isn't, that means we know that we've ended our current longest substring. So we actually have to check if it is the longest. And so the way we do that is we say if the current fin up minus fin low is less than up minus low. That means that the substring that we had just generated is of longer length than the substring generated from indices fin low to fin up. So if this is the case, then we have to update fin low and fin up. So fin low and fin up becomes low and up. Now, regardless of what happens here, we have to update the low variable because we need to now slide that up a little bit so that we don't keep checking existing values in our previous substrings. We want to start checking for a new substring of repeating characters. So we say low is equal to up. And then outside of this condition itself, we're going to increment up by one. And we want to do this because we want to eventually end the loop. And if we don't end the loop, then this is going to keep going on forever. And then we may actually run into an error once we see that up is no longer within the bounds of the string. And so the last thing that we have to do here is we're going to have to repeat lines six and seven at the end of this function. And the reason we're doing this is because there could potentially be a substring of longer length that goes all the way to the end, and we want to be able to account for that. So we'll say if fin up minus fin low is less than up minus low. If that's the case, then we will update fin low and fin up to be low and up. And finally, we can return the substring from fin low to fin up. So fin low is lower bound inclusive, fin up is the upper bound exclusive. And that's all that we have to do for our function. So let's go ahead and test this out. We'll start by testing our original string that we had. So print func, and that's the string that we had here. So a, b, b, a, b, a, 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 b, 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 a. So let's save that, and we can run this code. And we should see that our longest substring is indeed four a's, and that is correct. Now we can even try this with another test case. We could say maybe print func uh, a, b, c, c, b, c, a, a, c, a, 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 b. And so we should find that the longest substring of repeating characters is AAA. And when we run this, it indeed is AAA. Now, this is also going to work for an empty string. So if I just print func empty string, it's going to return an empty string. And so that is indicated by this empty space here. And so this is also going to work if we have all unique characters. In this case, it's just going to print the first character. So we can run this and we'll just see a here. And so this algorithm is very simple. It runs in linear time and it's much quicker than the quadratic or cubic algorithms that we may instead see
for problems like this. So that's it for this video and I hope this was helpful.